All right, and welcome to Monkey Fab Garage. This is Mike. I appreciate you all for dropping by, checking out my video. And we're picking up where we left off in the last video. <clears throat> this is just me bumble fucking around, wondering where to put these bungs at. And uh, we're just basically putting some bungs in this upper radiator hose that we built out of aluminum. And it is going to be for the thermocoupler for the relay. They'll trigger the relay for the fan and also a hose for the steam vent. So here we go. Perfect. Can I do one more in like upside down mode? Upside down mode. I'm just double secure. I like secure. I like security. Sweet. Yeah. Is that going to hit anything? I don't think so. Then we can... <laughs> so, we stick this one here and then this one here, and then we can, uh, we can run the wires for the relay kind of over here by the battery, which kind of makes sense to someone, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, right? So let's mark it. Get a bar, let's put a barb in here and see how it's going to look, how much space it's going to take. Ah, it's no wonder I don't ever get anything done, huh? Because like, uh, anyway, you know. Man, I don't have an eighth inch, I only have a quarter inch. so it's not around anything that's moving for the most part. Let's do that. Let's see. Right. And this guy can face like right here. That's fine. That much on this one. It's just going to be electronic, really. Okay, so we got a couple options. One is to drill these out. For the bungs and put the bungs in and weld those. The other is to just go ahead and stack a bunch of aluminum on there with the filler rod and then drill that and use that for the bung. I think I'm going that way. I don't really feel like wasting bungs because I can always sell those to people and it's my shit. My shit doesn't have to look nice. What you have to do is mark it. So let's mark where you would be at and I think that will be good enough and we'll just take some filler wire and so there we go. so what I'm using is a quarter inch and TP Give, I can go out a little bit past that, and then that should give me plenty of meat on there so I can drill into and tap with for the uh, 1 8th that I'm going to be using. NPT, it stands for National Pipe Tapered. So these guys are actually tapered. And that's why 
you're not supposed to use tape and shit on these guys because the more you screw them in, the wider they go and they kind of do it the whoop. Back at the welding table. Check out my flask that I just made. I always end up at the table telling you guys about how how I sell shit, but I sell these on my website. So it's got a little AN8 fitting, a little flare cap comes with it. And uh, I just make these out of stainless steel and weld them up. I got my little monkey fab logo. So uh, I don't mind showing you my work. So that's, uh, it's all stainless steel, 304, and uh, it's all back purged. People will say like, yo dog, am I going to die? And I say, yes, you are going to die, but it's not going to be because of this box. <laughs> okay, so... As you all know by now, switching over to the, this is the stainless steel rig. This is what I used to make that. This is the number 12 GLS cup that's sold on the website. Again, muchfabgarage.com. But we don't use this. We don't use this for aluminum. We use these shitty little guys. The shit that came with the, the torch. It's all you need. People don't believe me sometimes, I tell them. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. So I'm gonna give it about like that much. Whoa, I had it perfect and then it just disappeared. Oh, I'm falling over here. So that's the stick out that I run on these guys. So. In case you're wondering, and we'll turn it on, we'll weld at uh, 70 amps, it'll be 120-ish hertz, and just regular ass AC, and what did I say, 70 amps? It's not 70 amps, it's going to be, uh, the AC balance will be on 70, the uh, amps will be like 150. I don't think we'll need that, but we'll set it there. And that way it'll be easy to have the extra amps if we need them. And if we don't, then no big deal, right? All right, so we're gonna be welding meow. Can you see meow? You can't really see meow. There you go. Now you're like center, center stage, it's perfect. Put our reading glasses on and we'll get the big fat 330 seconds filler wire. And get ready to do this. Good.
So we got a couple lumps of aluminum on there. It didn't really turn out very nice, but it's okay. Most of it's gonna get uh, drilled out. Anyway, so at least it went down clean, even if it didn't look nice like I'd like it to. No worries, we're just gonna rock it. Just gonna tap these guys for uh, a 1-8 uh, NTP. It's this guy, Emil. And on my handy dandy chart, it says I'm supposed to use a 5 16 so I hope that's true. It looks about right. We'll pilot hole it just because it's kind of a big, big bit. You know, I'm not going to fast forward through this because this is important stuff. I'll just let it roll and you'll be like, wow, that's amazing. I can just watch that shit all day long. Nah, nah, it'll work. Tell you that is not gonna work. Oh, fuck. These got 
goddamn things are never fucking, never come as they're fucking advertised, I can tell you that much. All right, so we are short. These guys are like bottoming out. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw a piece of silicone cupper under the underside of that. And then when I zap it down, that's gonna take up some of the space and it'll actually tighten down. Yeah. I'll just stick this guy in here and it should eat up some of the space. So my original idea was I'll just cut this and bend it back more and re-weld it and it'll be shorter. So that, that's kind of the problem you have. Like when you like fabricate stuff is you're always in fucking fabrication mode. And sometimes it's stupid to be in fabrication mode. Like that would generally be a fucking jackass move, right? is the first time the system builds pressure, it's just gonna launch that fucking hose right out of those couplers. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have to find some rubber and some actual screw type hose clamps that, that are half the price and actually work. Whatever's right, whatevs. Alright, so now we just need some uh, a bung, a little uh, barb on there, and we can connect the steam port, and the upper part of the radiator stuff will be done. So, this is where we left off last night, and I just I wasn't sure if I actually gave you guys a close up of what's going on. Let me take so, we added uh, this guy. I mean, we buttoned it up, I guess, is a better way of saying what we're, what we're trying to say. We added the sensor for the 180 degree fan uh, kick, kick on, so we'll wire that to the small side of the relay. And when it hits uh, 180 degrees, the electric fan will kick on. And we added a bung for the steam vent, so I ordered the 1 8 inch MPT barb for that. Found some nice stainless steel ones. I bought like 10 of them because I'll probably use them. And once we get that, we can just run the, uh, the hose from here around here. And we'll just kind of zip tie it up to this cable right here. And that way it'll stay nice and tucked away out of everything that's spinning and rotating. And we added some D-rings just to kind of make this nice, nice. These guys seem like they're holding. This was the side that really had me kind of worried. Was this? Is, oh yeah, so once that wax stuff kind of dried up, it looks like it got a good grip in there. So that was the upper radiator hose. Still got to do the bottom. What I think I'll do so uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for checking in and watching the video on Monkey Fab. And uh, be sure to check out my website. It's monkeyfabgarage.com for like, uh, like lots of little turbo accessories and stuff. And uh, yeah, so check it out. All right, everybody, this is Mike from Monkey Fab. I appreciate you stopping in, checking out the video. Uh, 
you got to see how we went ahead and made that uh, upper radiator hose, how we added the bungs by just stacking some aluminum on there. It's something you can do at home. You'll also notice that I once again use that center drill when I went to go pop those holes in there because if I was just using a regular bit, it would tend to want to walk just all over the place. So, you know, a little bit of tap in the center with a center punch and then follow that with the, the center drill and you'll be able to drop those uh, holes right exactly where you need them. So forgive my obvious dys dyslexia, <laughs> I'm working on it. Please just uh, bear with me, you know, it's a work in progress. I appreciate you stopping by and checking out the videos.